Hello everyone, our topic for now will be functionally generated path way to harmonious occlusion. Now functionally generated path as the name itself is saying some path which is being generated with the help of function of the mandible. So functionally generated path, Frederick Mayer was the first one who advocated this technique as functionally generated occlusion that is in the denture for the bridges. As in denture we do, he did it in the bridges. That is the first thing he came across. So functionally generated path technique is a simple method by capturing the precise border pathway of the mandibular posterior teeth. Now it utilizes an approaches which achieves the occlusal harmony when between the restoration and that of opposing tooth. It was first described by Mayer as a functional occlusal path that was in the year of 1934. Man, Panky and Men was the one who adopted this technique for occlusal rehabilitation in the fixed partial denture patients. Before going to the steps in functionally generated path, let's see what are the advantages of this particular functionally generated path. The first advantage is that it's very simple in fabrication, inexpensive instrumentation. It eliminates the need for adjusting an articulator with interclusal record or a tracing device, it eliminates the need of a phase board transfer. Minimum chair site time is required. Accuracy, which is another advantage of this technique. And it's an easy technique to learn. Now coming to the disadvantages is that the occlusion in one of the arches must be complete before a generated path can be developed. So you have to complete one occlusion completely. In an inaccurate record, it can be at times masticatory cycle differs depending on the type and the texture of food being we chew. At times it can be straight, at times it can be centrically motioned. This means that the pattern developed in the wax is accurate for the wax only and the food stuff may full fill outside and fall outside the particular chewing cycle at times. So these are the different disadvantages which come across when we are using functionally generated path. If the following facts are understood, the value of a FGP or a functionally generated path as a logic method of achieving precisely accurate occlusal contours will be obvious. That is number one, the border pathways of the lower posterior teeth are dictated by two different determinants. One the condylar guidance and one is incisal guidance. In another word, posterior determinant and anterior determinant. So this is the first point that you need to keep in mind. The second point is the functionally generated path procedures properly used an upper posterior teeth record. Directly possible border pathway of the lower posterior teeth as they are influenced by both the anterior and posterior determinants. That means a FGP procedure is mostly for the posterior teeth because when the posterior teeth is rightly placed then they will influence the anterior as well and also the condylar guidance. The shape of the occlusal surface of the lower posterior teeth has a profound influence on the type of the occlusion that is dictated by moving the sage shape along the border pathway through the functional wax. That means the shape of the posterior teeth, that means it should be 33 degree, 30 degree, 20 degree or whatsoever has to be different and that will determine how much movement is allowed for that particular teeth. That is from the centric relation to long centric, the movement which is allowed as well as from the centric relation to the excursion sides as it is allowed. Now what are the basic fundamental principles that before we are going to the steps we need to see that. The functional occlusal path is the accurate determination of geometric harmonious relationship between the occlusal path and the condylar path at a chosen vertical dimension. Now centric occlusion is the automatic determinant of the closed centric relation of the mandible or in other words, if you have to simplify this thing, centric occlusion is nothing but any occlusion at centric relation. So now in that occlusion, maximal intercuspation is not required. So we need to see how much movement is allowed. So the cusp and the sulci analysis 
is the automatic determinant of the relation height of the relative height of the cusp and the depth of the sulci, marginal ridges and inclined planes to develop balance occlusion during the function. So these are all the fundamental principles that we need to see. So now let's see how are the steps which are to record the functionally generated path. And before the steps, we need to also know that what are the different articulators that we can go ahead with. We can use verticulator, verticulator, the twin stage occluder, hinge articulator or a plane line articulator. These are the instruments or instrumentation that is required to you know, fabricate a function generated path. So steps in recording FGP, the first thing that we need to do is maxillary posterior teeth are prepared. Now when this FGP comes into picture, I will tell you, first anteriors are prepared, crowns are done, fixed the crowns are done, maxillary and mandibular anteriors are done. Now the mandibular posterior is done and then the maxillary posterior. So when the maxillary posterior teeth are prepared, impression of maxillary prepared teeth are made. See now like this, now anteriors are all done, now maxillary teeth will be prepared and the maxillary impression will be made. Extra hard base plate wax is used to adapt to the cast and this acts as a base for the functional wax. Now this is the impression which is made. Now after making the impression of the prepared tooth, a, a wax is adapted to the posterior nail. We need to keep in mind that that wax should not come in the anterior. So only a rectangular posterior area of the wax that has to be made. Functional wax is softened and added to the base plate. Now it should be impressed by one third of each of the lower arch. The teeth one third should go inside that particular wax. Patient is guided through all the movements that the patient is going to do. Protrusive, lateral excursion movements. So there is one wax is being melted over and it is being generated. A path is created on the wax and also the imprint of the lower teeth is already there. The maxillary teeth is making some path over that particular wax. So wax is then chilled in the ice water. Why is that so? So that it hardens after our entire functionally generated path is recorded. Now after the wax is hard, you take it out and a stone mix is applied in the wax in the mouth. Now stone mix, where is it applied? Onto the functionally generated path which was done by the maxillary teeth. Onto that surface you will add the stone mix. Functional stone core is created now. Now you can understand, now this is our wax. Here was a mandibular imprint into one third. Upper it was all all the movements of the maxillary teeth has happened. Now once the maxillary teeth is all happened with the upper cast, we will put stone over here and also we will put stone on the lower side. So lower side, you removed it outside the mouth and then you have to put the stone in the lower and on the upper side. So when you have put the stone on the lower side, what will become? It will become the tooth, the natural teeth or the crowns of the mandible. That will come as a stone because that is a positive replica after pouring it with the stone. So that will be called as functional stone core, you understanding till here? Then maxillary master die model is articulated against the functional stone core using verticulator. Verticulator is what kind of instrument? It is like a straight rod. It has a maxillary uh, or upper membrane. It has a lower membrane. The only movement possible in this verticulator is up and down, up and down. So you can take the maxillary cast up or down. So now when the stone core cast or core, functional stone core is prepared, then the maxillary cast also we have. Now you have to place the maxillary cast onto that stone core and mount it. Wax pattern is prepared directly against the functional model. Against the functional model, wax pattern is directly prepared. And when the wax pattern will be prepared, that means now the wax pattern is prepared on what? on the functionally generated wax intraoral record material that we have taken. Now the patient can be either canine guided, can be a groove function. So groove function is obtained by adjustment of the lingual inclines of the maxillary buccal cusp to contact against the functional core. If it is a groove function, how will we achieve the groove function? So groove function will be achieved by we will take the lingual inclines of the maxillary buccal cusp. Why? Because there is a functional cusp. Lingual incline and maxillary buccal cusp. So we will take that and it will contact against the functional core. 
In posterior disocclusion scheme, what will happen? How much disocclusion is required according to Christiansen's phenomena? That is 5 degree. So when there is disocclusion, the pattern should be completely relieved from the centric stop contact of the functional core because we have to create the disocclusion posteriorly when the patient is protruding forward. So when it is protruding forward, it has to have the disocclusion. That means the maxillary has to come out of the functional core cast which is there. And then the final prosthesis like this is prepared. See, in posterior, we have disocclusion. This is a group function of the patient as a group function. You can see left lateral uh, here, there is this canine guided. When the canines are meeting, no other teeth are in contact. Similarly, on this side, when canines are meeting, it is disocclusion on the non-working side. And this is a complete picture of the rehabilitation using Pankyman technique. Coming to the advantages, simple, it is an expensive instrumentation. It eliminates the need of adjusting an articulator with interclusal record or a tracing device for that matter. But yes, here you require a verticulator. Eliminates the need of making a face bow. Chair side time is reduced. Easy technique, disadvantages that it is an inaccurate method. Occlusion in one of the arches must be complete before generated path. So that means mandibular occlusion should be all complete and only maxillary should be left over. Now, it is a now computer generated. Now everything in today's technology of 21st century, we have CAD CAM, where it is computer aided designing, computer aided manufacturing. So now this functionally generated path is changed to OGP, FGP is changed to OGP. That is computer generated occlusal generated path. It is used to design where a CAD CAM, functional restoration by simulating maxillomandibular movement pattern on the basic data of the protrusive, lateral trusive, medial trusive pathway of the interclusal contact movement. That means what? That when in a CAD CAM technology, what we do in a computer screen, you do all this movement that you do intraorally. You have recorded the maxillomandibular relationship of the patient and then transfer the data to the computer. Now the computer will say and you will direct the computer to give protrusive, the patient protrusive will be recorded and transferred as per in the computer. So in the computer you will maintain this functionally generated path. You will put a wax pattern inside the computer, you will make the protrusive movements on the keeping a wax, all these are virtual. So all this virtual story will come up and we have the wax virtually that will happen to have rub over the protrusive pathway, lateral extrusion, medial trusive, lateral trusive, all the movements will happen and then we will have a stone cast virtually present, then we have to mount the articulator that is also virtually, then finally we will prepare the die cutting of that particular tooth which is prepared and wax patterns will be prepared and finally the restoration will come over from the CAM machine that is computer aided manufacturing. So computer design and computer manufacturing using CIRIC 3D optical scanner. Now the important question over here is that when you are doing this particular thing outside the patient, how are we recording what is there in the patient in the computer? The first thing is how are we doing an impression? The impression here has changed. Impression here is with the help of not impression material, but with a scanner. It is called optical scanner. And before using optical scanner to make all the area visible, properly recordable and what we are using is titanium dioxide that is used with the help of glycerin for 0.2 microns to 0.8 microns it is spread over the teeth surface intraorally. So now after that you scan, scanner is like this kind of machine, you scan all the entire teeth like you do for a Xerox machine and the imprint of the entire maxilla and mandibular occlusal surface is recorded and transferred into the computer. This is all the procedure which is done and using that procedure the entire thing is transferred to the computer virtually. Virtual means in a in a dream, virtual. So everything is computerized. Now your maxilla mandibular relation is, is there in the computer protrusive records or your lateral protrusive records all will be generated by the computer. Final outcome that we will get is the crown itself 
which will be based on the different functionally generated path that we give, the different, you know, the movements that we will make sure. We will also find out the centric relation or the long centric inside the computer. So the technique of fabrication is different, but the technique followed till the fabrication remains the same, that is functionally generated path. See, this is an optical scanner onto, now this, now this optical scanner can be used in two ways. This is classified into two types, direct technique and indirect technique. Direct technique, when you use this optical scanner inside the mouth, for that you have to spray titanium dioxide mixed with glycerine powder. And if you have to scan the optical scanner onto the cast also, that is also possible. So cast is made and then that is scanned. So cast is scanned. So then these are the two techniques. See, we can see titanium dioxide is sprinkled all over the teeth. This TiO2 is the white color powder which is there with 8 to 10 microns. And then we have optical scanning which is done. Then after optical scanner is done, you can see in the computer screen how the occlusal surface has come up. Now here we will make the wax pattern. We will estimate the height of the preparation. We will find out if there is any high points. We will find out the movements of the maxillary over the mandibular or the mandibular over the maxillary. Basically the entire, you know, the functionally generated path can be fabricated here virtually. Then finally comes the procedure that is a milling procedure. Now when we have finalized this, we have to press the button which says milling. Milling is once the final virtual restoration is done, load the chamber with the predetermined shape and size of a ceramic ingots. These are called ingots, not block, ingots. And within a few minutes, an exact replica of the design is reproduced in the ceramic. Now this particular design which is reproduced with the help of computer designed computerized design that is it why it is called CAD, CAM, CAD, CAM, computer aided designing and computer aided manufacturing of a crown. Now the final restoration, a beautiful final restoration comes over which has very nice optical properties matching to the adjacent teeth as well. You can see the translucency nicely prepared. Also the functional cusp I can see very nicely which is down a little bit than the non-functional. Hence all the functionally generated path has been followed here because I can also see the curve of P which is moving upwards. So the you can see the maxillary molar moving upwards. So that means the curve of P is also followed very nicely. So this is how final restoration looks from a CAD CAM. Technology is easy, simple, but for that we need to know the, the very much good principle lying behind that particular technology. So that's the reason that function generated path is important. Advantage comes up to accurate modeling of the individual dynamic movements or movement pattern is there. So movement pattern, we did not do it intraorally, patient tech the patient's cooperation is not required to us. We can all do it virtually and final restoration can come over which can be placed in the patient using functionally generated path. Thank you.